Hello, this is Adam Rayner for Talk Audio TV. And once again, I'm in a car with men. Um, in the background there, looking slightly less troubled than otherwise, because he knows the chap in the front's really the one who's going to get it, is Mr. Sean Marin. Sean, how long have we had a professional relationship for, dear boy? 12, 13 years. Uh, too maybe? bloody long, you poor yeah, man. Yeah, long, yeah. Bowers and Wilkins is where we're at. Gentleman, gentleman the, next to me here um, is the chap actually responsible for the speakers in this here car. Um, we're sat in a Volvo XC90. This is Mr. Stuart Lovell. Hi. Um, he's looking proper worried now. Stuart, tell us a little bit about, um, actually, first of all, what is in this car? Because that's what people always want to know. We'll soon know, Mr. That's the first sort of, actually, this is a big old car. We've got speakers in four doors and there's a woofer somewhere. That's what I know because it says so on the display. <laughs> um, so what's in each door, first of all? What are the actual, what's the speaker complement? Uh, so in the front doors, there's a 25 millimeter or one inch tweeter. 100 millimeter, so like four inch mid range, and then there's a 165mm kind of a seven inch base driver in the, in the front doors. Uh -huh. Rear doors, uh, much the same, but the mids are a, an 80mm. Yes. It's more like a three inch. Um, uh, I'm busy panning the camera around in places I didn't do during technical rehearsals because, in actual fact, as you pointed to them, we can see them. Um, that top tweeter, uh, that looks tremendously to me like a hard dome of aluminium. I can even see the ridges in it through the grill with my Carl's ice. Mm -hmm. is, is that a ridged hard dome in there? It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's an aluminium dome tweeter, so Oop. it kind of works cleanly to about 30 kilohertz. It's also got the Nautilus loading on the back of it as well, so it's got oh my... Nautilus technology as well. In there. Gosh. So it's integrated in a kind of spiral package, so it's a much lower profile for automotive applications in particular. So, so as I zoom in on that yellow speaker cone, um, what Mr. Level's telling you about is, well, in the front of that lovely brochure about this here car, there's a picture of the Nautilus speaker. And a big part of why your tweeter sounds so amazing is what you call the Nautilus technology, which is that long tube behind the tweeter. And there's one of them curled up behind that in the car door here. Indeed, yes, it's a in the form of a spiral. And in the meanwhile, in here as well. So, dashboard has got a, a, the, the, the same Nautilus tweeter, uh, notably on top, so it's in a, its own little enclosure and it's mounted kind of above the dashboard and rather than firing up at the screen as most tweeters do, it's firing down the car, which is very advantageous because you get a increased kind of ratio of direct to reflected sound. So you're getting less of a, a bounce of sound off the screen, less of a comb filtering effect and more of the direct sound from so for the people who, whoops, who might not know what a comb filtering effect is, tell us tell us about comb filtering. What happens when you spray off a screen? Oh, well, God, okay, now it, define comb filtering in a few words. Oh, thanks, fat bloke. <laughs> it's an interference pattern. So you get uh, addition and subtraction mm -hmm. at frequencies, at uh, different frequencies, uh, which effectively colours the sound simplicity. So, uh, so, so rather than being a smooth, straight line, the frequency response looks like a wavy line, which is not so nice, really. Dude, uh, that's awesome, you completely, <laughs> completely sorted that. Okay, we've still got the climate control on, Chur, so a little bit about how this works, and then... The climate control, okay. Well, I'm not just saying the climate control, we've got that on, I'm just saying, Chur, <laughs> a little bit about how the uh, the audio works there, because um, okay, so there's this particular track. I'm going to position this in the middle, and unlike me, actually shut the heck up. So, yes, yeah, so here is the, the the player for media content, so we can uh, scroll out into car functions, scroll... Oh, dear. It's just, it's coming off its phone. We're going to scroll into this other media options. So we, here we've got obviously the radio, we've got all in and a USB stick in there if we really want it. So we're using Bluetooth at the moment. So it's simply a case of selecting tracks and uh, hitting play. Really. In flesh, I cut my teeth on wedding rings in the movies. So obviously control on the phone and on the screen as well. My Pause by the phone and yeah. play it again for me on the steering wheel. <laughs> Start from the top. I've never seen a diamond in the flesh. I cut my teeth on wedding rings in the movies, and I'm not proud of my. Now, hilariously, it might well be that uh, the head up display in here is actually looking a little bit. Um, well, it seems to be flickering for me when I look at it on video. Where can I find it? Where is it? Where's the head-up display? I can see it clearly by eye. But it was actually right, mate. You know me video. It was bouncing up and down gently with the... Um, doesn't show at all on video. Bouncing up and down gently with the bass there, but uh, <laughs> let's press play again. In fact, let's have the next track. If we're going to get done for copyright. Let's have a couple. Boom. 
we can play some uncopyrighted tracks if you like. Is that if that's better on the USB stick? Oh, that might be interesting. Yeah, I well, tell you what, let's um, uh, let's let's stop that bun there because we might be able to get a razor blade in there somewhere and play something uncopyrighted. Here we go. Okay, well, it's a minor pain in the neck when YouTube go, oh, you can't have that piece of music. Um, and in any case, if you have checked this thing out, Bowser and Wilkins are one of the, well, the only speaker company, I could be wrong here, but I'm pretty certain, to actually engage with getting music made. Now, although Howie B is, uh, I think there was just this one issue for that one track, there's other ones here which I think we can use without getting copyrights. Uh, copyright, what's the word? Copyright, not strikes, but notifications. to try two or three tracks because no matter how good one is looking at the little wobbly meters on your camcorder well the sound system's not too good on this but relying on the signal to noise ratio it's basically because people always ask have you got someone else because you didn't play it on the and there's some japanese folks who play million dollar hi-fis through a camcorder on youtube it's quite bonkers <laughs> so people are always saying oh play it play it play it should we turn the the oh back off as well no let's oh, turn the back off or? it could well be a little bit less noises Maybe to the engine office if that's going to help. I'll tell you what, let's check this out. This is so cute. Look, look, look. Oh. Feel the heat. So the envelopment effectively makes it wet and the intensity makes it wetter. <laughs> and that's a technical recording studio term for the amount of an effect used. Yeah, so I was of... shouting about it on X Factor. Yeah. The latest uh, first flaming it's... auditions actually were as yeah. wet as a wet thing. They were flipping covered in effects. They were even multi track They hang one mic. Anyway, yes, well, yeah. we know about that. So, so individual stage is supposed to it's supposed to recreate the, the effectively you you being on stage yes. with the with the performers. So uh -huh. effectively you're stood on stage, they're around you. Yes. The envelopment effectively kind of and that graphic there is showing how much they they are around you and wrapping around you rather well, than I, I am recording in five point one, so although the fidelity might be out there. Stuff like that. I have heard all kinds of weird stereo things, which is why I'm steadfastly holding this slightly primitive camcorder now, bless Sony. Um, in a very firm spot, but it, it, it's one of those odd things. The um... Check this out, though. This is fabulous. So, Gothenburg. Wir sind im Gothenburg, ja. So this one, it effectively, if you want to, want, if you like that kind of thing, it strips the reverb out of the track and replaces it with the reverb of the Gothenburg concert room. Which is known for its fine acoustics. But like what for Coliseum, mate? The constant I am sure of is this accelerating rate of change. 
That was Mr. Peter Gabriel. This video will absolutely probably about three or four sets of ads on there. <laughs> None of which will be of... Uh, anyway, the point is, is that it sounds breathtaking. And Mr. Gabriel is, always has been one of the absolute leading proponents, like, like that fellow Gordon Sumner, for wanting to really push back the edges of what can be done with recording. And you guys in particular have been heavily engaged with with, um, uh, with Peter, have you not? Is it, we have, yeah. Did yeah, you yeah, get to meet him? Have you? Have you, have you? I have not met him, no, no. but uh, I mean, obviously our speakers are at Real World yes. Studios, um, I mean, that track was probably recorded there, Yes, amongst many others. Uh, he's been involved in various uh, collaborations, including things like Womad. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. There is one thing, actually, uh, there's one little favour that, I mean, like, Womad is a bit of a thing to get to, and I sort of had a little plea and I didn't really count enough, but I want to hear that huge Bowser Mockins concert system. What's it called? The sound system. The sound, sound system, system. Yeah. Only Bowers can just call it the sound system. <laughs> <laughs> look at the smile on that man's face. Look at look at that happy smile. That means, yes, fat boy, it's absolutely wicked. It's capturing you because you're grinning. I only take pictures when you smile. Mm. Um, gentlemen, thank you so, so much. Um, what can I say other than um, I'm absolutely, completely blown away. The uh, messings about that I'd done in here before actually getting to have... The gentleman who helped design the system give me the demo. I've been so, I mean, like, completely white gloves. That and the, the wonderful meal as well. So, um, question is, is uh, will you get sacked if I turn this camera around? And uh, uh, thank you to Hannah A, uh, Hannah C, rather, I should say, who is the effective uh, executive who helped sort all this out. Because you were bloody elusive, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is awesome. An, an enormous thank you to Volvo Car UK for lending me this XC, which is one heck of a thing. I'm going to do some more video about the car itself as well because that's breathtaking. But mm. I can tell you that, almost sadly, because I was working in the aftermarket forever, if you buy a Volvo XC90 and you quite like the audio system in it, it's nice. If you really want an audiophile system that is going to kick you flipping right in the pleasure gland, well, the Bowser Wilkins system is worth every single penny. It's just only three grand on the car, that's what it said on the spec, compared to what you can spend on, I mean, it always used to be disproportionately bad value, and you guys have just messed that up. No, yeah, this one is good value. You have messed that up. This is supposed to be overpriced and not as good as it claims and stuff. Well, thank you, it's bloody awesome. <laughs> that is a technical description. The dynamics, um, the, the extension, the fact that the head-up display just shakes a little tiny little bit um, <laughs> when the bass hits. I have to have a look at where the stuff is in here, see if they can show me. Where's, where's your woofers, mister? Can I look at it? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they'll see the woofers and the rear doors. There is another yes. uh, woofer in located behind one of the rear wheels, which oh, is something? called the, uh, the, the fresh air subwoofer, oh, which is perfect. <gasps> use. It uses Ooh. the entire world as, as, a, as a loudspeaker cabinet. Do you know what? You just described something which I, I think I know the high tier supplier who may have supplied that. Yes. And I wasn't allowed to talk about it. Okay. And you just mentioned it. Um, it's quite bonkers. It's infinite baffle subwooferage, and uh, you can only do it when you're actually allowed to pressure the base to the outside world. Yeah. That I mean, never that's... happening in aftermarket. Yeah. That's one thing where the monocoque of the car is something to do with the audio system. Mm. And that is where it really starts to get serious. Gentlemen, thank you so much. I've blithered all together too much as ever. Adam Rayner starting out for Talk Audio TV um, inside an XC90 outside Bowser Walkins research thing. We're just going to have a little look at that too. Here you go, just to prove I wasn't bragging about it, because normally I'm in some like. I'll tell you what, it was very glamorous. Guess I was for Claren the other day, guys. Toddington Services. Wow. Yeah. Swiss is staining, it's a little posher here. <laughs> just to prove that we've actually pulled the, uh, the bollards out. <laughs> We're sitting in a car outside. The, uh, the research establishment, this isn't where the factory is, this is the research establishment. If you go up to the doors, we'll just check out the things that they've got. <laughs> just casually sat. And that's the least, oh my. Ooh. And the cabinet inside, the legendary Nautilus tweeter tube thing. Yes, so there we are. Adam Rayner at Bowers and Wilkins here in Staining on the seaside with the really quite remarkable Volvo XC90 D5 R design. I mean, it's very pretty. And the all wheel drive thing, yes. Gosh, this absolutely stonks. Heck of a car. And the Bowers and Wilkins sound system in it is remarkable. You can probably hear some wind noise on this. One of the lovely things about coming to Staining is. There's a course at the seaside. And I've driven up the road a little bit. 
found somewhere I can stop the car. I just passed where the uh, is it a pier? It's all rather lovely on the Brighton Road here. It's a rather lovely residential street. It's not very common actually. There's lots of houses on the side of the road facing the ocean, but there's not many that are directly looking onto the sea here. So there it is. Volvo XC90, bows and walking sound system in it, with a post up the middle. Let's have a little look at some of the uh, actual specifications of the stuff in here as well. So I get a copyright claim on the. Uh... There we go. Facts and figures. It's active and passive. Apparently the uh, this passive crossover between the mids and the tweeters, and we're looking at uh, 19 speakers, 12 channels, 1400 watts. And there's a whole bunch of uh, Kevlar transducers in here. Oh, looky, looky! <laughs> Check this bit out. Big, big woofer. These are the speakers. Bit of a Kevlar, bit of a beautiful HF. Fact is, is it's uh, just remains one of the loveliest, loveliest sets of speakers put together by people who come from a lovely part of the world. And yes, on uh, DAB and FM it can get reasonably meaty, but I have to say I was uh, meeting up with a friend of mine down this part of the world, Brad Cool. He's made some enormous systems in the past. He runs Brad's Bespoke Automotive. One of the best rapping outfits about, and I don't mean music, I'm talking about 3M and the other makers. Geese has even done helicopters. What a lovely part of the world. 1400 watts of uh, Bowers and Wilkins' finest. Yeah, the fascinating thing is, is that woofer in there. Well, it's actually Alpine in the UK who supply that to the OEM market, but yet the people who actually did it and where it's licensed from are in Australia. And I have the PR connections to be able to do some finding out about it. So if you are watching me panning around the seaside, you just heard the most controversial part of the entire review. <laughs> well done for hanging on. Adam Rayner, Talk Audio TV.